Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and in this lesson, let's understand a very very important topic in the field of music production or actually in the field of music in general which is what I call as time fields or what we call in the music production, DAW or the recording world as the grid, right? So I have recorded some music uh, as you just heard and as you can see, it records it as MIDI notes, which essentially indicates where the note started and for how long the note was. Now we need to understand where these notes were actually musically aligned and also how we can work with them and what tasks you would generally end up doing once you have recorded musical information. And it all starts with the grid and understanding how beats are divided or understanding what I call as the time field. So to access any kind of information after you've recorded MIDI in an application like Reaper or pretty much in any DAW, you double click, it opens up into its own MIDI editor window, you could say. And if I play that back, Right? So I've basically recorded some kind of information and there's vocals as well, but we are focused more on the MIDI. Let's understand the musical grid in more detail now. The musical grid will first of all have bars. In this instance, as you can see, I started at bar number three and then the bars have beats. This would be bar 3, beat 1, bar 3, beat 2, bar 3, beat 3, bar 3, beat 4. And if I zoom a bit further in, I have the sub beats. In this instance, the bar 3 got divided into two equal units. So that's bar 3 at the end or the sub beat 1. If I zoom in further, I have the bar 3 being divided now into four equal units. 1, E and a. Uh. So now if you read this clearly, it's bar 3 beat 1, sub beat 1 and now your grid is divided into 4, okay? Here this is bar 3, beat 2, sub beat 1 or the E, 2 E and a. Uh. So if I count this out for you, 1 E and a, uh, 2 E and a, uh, 3 E and a. Uh. That is a generic way or a general way in which we count this information or the sub beats. So if I played this music now for you, you'll realize that I was in the world of 16th notes because I divided the musical performance into four equal units. In a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three and a four E. Right? The amount of information I played was basically up to the nearest 16th note or I played musical notes which were dividing the beat by 4 or went into the division system of 4. Okay, there are many ways in which you could look at it. So you need to understand that when you open up your grid more, you're going to see more lines. So if I go 1 by 32, I see a lot of lines. In this instance, I don't need to see so many lines. So I would prefer... 1 16th or dividing the beat by 4. Okay, so let's understand the grid a bit further before I give you a few practical examples. So first off, you have the 8th note grid, which I would recommend is the most default starting point. Your music is divided into two equal units or the pulse is divided into two equal units. However, you could also show the grid at the pulse level which is one fourth. So if you show your music at the pulse level or if you show your grid at the pulse level, then basically you're telling yourself that your music will not divide the beat, which is going to be highly rare uh, unless perhaps you want to play something as simple as this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Right. So in this instance, you see, I'm not at all dividing the beat. One, two, three, four. So that's my quarter note grid. But for the most part, when you're creating music, you're not going to be not dividing the beat. You are going to be dividing it by something. So you will find 
that your default is eighth notes. However, you can even go deeper away from the division of the beat or you can multiply the beat as we sometimes call it. You can do minims or you can do half notes. That means you will not even see the beat two. You'll only see beat one and beat three of the bar, right? Or you can go the entire bar of four. You can start with an eighth note grid sequence. So you're dividing the beat by two. One and two and three and four and one and right and three and four and. However, you also have the option of dividing the beat by four, which is 16th note. So there we go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Or you divide the grid by eight. So you'll be making like very, very fast music, probably some fancy arpeggiated uh, bass, bass lines or leads and so on. So I'm going to just show you what eighth note straight sounds like. And then we're also going to explore a few other options which we get with the grid. And these options, mind you, are musical things. So when you compose music, it's important that you know what you're composing on, especially the first thing you write. So if the first phrase you wrote was, let's say, on a 16th note straight time feel, then all of your arrangement is going to be around that. You need to perhaps set your grid to that setting, right? So eighth note straight means if I played you the metronome track, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. First of all, I would want to count it one and two and three and four and like this, right? So now if I play music, So even if I don't play the divisions, this is going to be the maximum inside I'm going to get in the beat. Da, 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 da. See, I can play some eighth notes which are ghosted or soft eighth notes. All eighth notes, right? Three. If I count again, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, I'm still feeling eighth notes. One and two and three and four, one and now I'm bringing back the eighth notes. One, one and two and three, or I can just play the ands and one and two and three and four and one and two and th right. So the metronome right now is actually just giving me the pulse, which it should be, because then you feel your music better. You, I feel you should always hear the pulse with the metronome and not, not anything else really. Don't experiment too much with the click. Uh, now if you see where my music is aligned, and if you see my grid currently is quarter notes, I'm going to take it up to eighth notes straight. That means it's dividing the beat into exactly two units. So you see... Bar number 27 for now, beat 1, sub beat 2 or sub beat 1. This is the main on beat or down beat and this is your and or the sub beat. How many sub beats do I have when I am on an eighth note grid? 2. Let's see how it sounds. 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. So if I have to do operations now with this in an application like Reaper, what I can do is the most obvious thing or the first thing we do as producers, which is quantize. So one option is to hit this button or just hit the shortcut Q. So if I hit Q, I can quantize either selected notes, which I'm selecting here, or what I prefer to do is perhaps all notes. So if I do all notes, as you just saw, they all get aligned with the grid. I'm going to do that again. Quantize all notes. And now all notes get aligned to the nearest location in the grid. And now if I play it back, it sounds a lot more on time. One, two, three, four, right? And you can always take a few notes back to normal to retain some original vibe. So in this instance, I've just taken those notes back to the their originally played location. 
okay so this is an eighth note feel now let's also explore an eighth note swing feel where if this is the pulse two and two three four one and two this is straight divisions one and two and now if i swing this da 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 the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one right but before i actually play something with swing i'd i'd rather play you something with a triplet feel the triplet feel sort of covers the swing inside it so if i have to co count triplets now a good way to count it would be one one and a two two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a, right four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one triplet two triplet three triplet four trip tuck it tuck it tuck. right so now let's build some music on a triplet time field and let's see how we can work with our grid two three four a one two three four a one two swinging ta 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 play all the divisions of the triplets again you can play a few and make it groovy right so that also makes it interesting so just because we've divided the beat into three equal units doesn't mean that you play all so let's just give it a short listen to how this sounds and since we said it's triplets you need to change your grid into triplets so i would say eighth note triplet so we've covered the straight feel eighth notes now you do eighth note triplet and as you can see all the notes sort of align yes there is some human mishaps but sometimes the human mishaps are also good so be very careful when you quantize especially if you're working with a with a trained musician sometimes this is not really a mistake it should not be considered a mistake if it sounds good to your ear but just know that it's sort of on the triplet feel right one triplet of my division points as you can see are pretty much on the grid on the triplet grid so a triplet generally when you're composing your music every pulse would be divided into three equal time units dagger the dagger the dagger the dagger the right and the dagger the dagger the dagger the dagger the dagger the dagger and so on okay so this is about your triplet and inside the triplet you also have the element of swing so let me just play you something which is just pretty much only swing and then we could take it from there okay that will be ta da ta So what I played for you is something I guess you could say bluesy. So if you observe there, I'm not really going one triplet. I'm not doing one and. Uh, I'm not doing all the three divisions. It's always one and is off and the a uh is hit. So ta ta da ta da. Ta da ta 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 ta. Right. So you're only playing the one and the three divisions of the triplet and leaving out the middle one. So what we have in DAWs is you'll have a swing grid. 
which you could access. So you could access this swing grid, uh, make it eighth note swing because I'm still dividing the beat into two equal in, in now unequal units, right? I'm doing it in eighth note swing and there we go. You'll find that all of my units, all of my beats are at that swing point. And what's nice with some of the DAWs, it allows you to kind of adjust that swing. There we go. It adjusts the swing. So it doesn't have to be perfect triplet swing. You can adjust it here and there, you know, using this marker. Maybe a little lazy and you see this slider change. I can even change the slider here. So maybe I... I, I, I want it to be 50% swing, 50% swing would be perfect triplets, then I could move it a little bit here and there. And that's the beauty of working with swing in a DAW. You can make your performance sound a little bit more interesting or a bit more human and get those hip hop R&B vibes which people try out like they do quintuplet swing or you know septuplet swing. There are all sorts of swing which you could consider, which are used in genres like neo soul or funk and so on and so forth. Right? So if I play this back, you'll see that it's pretty much swung. Right? Da, 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 da. So now if I have to fix this performance or or work with it in any way, I can actually take any of these elements and move it. So if I take this, I can snap it to my grid. Snap this to my grid. Now, if I have to quantize this or if I have to fix this, if you actually do not realize that this is a swing performance, which I guess you have figured out by now, but if you have not, and let's say if the grid happened to be eighth note straight, you see, first of all, it's quite obvious. A lot of my notes are off this grid because it is not straight it is swung so what i do if i have if i do this by mistake and just hit quantize to the grid which is straight it's going to completely change this performance it's automatically automatically made it like rock and roll right it's quite cool actually right now if I take this back to where it should have been, which is eighth note swing. Let's come back to the, the way I tried to play it, right? Or you could leave it back to normal or bypass the whole project altogether of quantization. And yes, I hope you've understood the difference between swing and straight, guys. So a swing feel is more like a triplet feel without the middle triplet, while a straight feel is exact 50% division of the beat. Since you've understood straight and swing, Triplet is not too difficult either. Triplet is all the divisions, pretty much every single division. Also, please note that if I do a 16th note version of straight, what's going to happen is now I have the access of dividing the beat into four equal units. So that'll be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, right? So if I build music on this feel, I can get some... I can get a lot more rhythmically interesting results because I have so many more permutations to divide the beat in, right? So let me just demonstrate 16th note straight a little bit. Okay. quarters which is fine you can relax here you see how normal the quarters sound right or pulse i'm on the pulse divide by two and now divide by four sixteen I 
right? So that's your 16th node field. Let's see how this looks in the grid. Again, you're going to want to choose the 16th node straight grid. And now you will see all these E's and the E's. So if I zoom in a little bit, you see one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. So you see all these divisions. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. that's how you count it. So you see all these additional divisions. And if you quantize it, it should sound quite good as a 16th note rhythmic feel, right? If you have to also do 16th note triplets, 16th note triplet would mean you're actually, a simple way to understand it is you're dividing the beat into six equal parts. So if you do 16th note triplets, it's going to be Dug a 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 one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six one right we'll come back to that but for now let's just focus on the sixteen notes straight which I'm going to play you a little bit right so let's just consider this division so this is the a one e a. One e and a, one e and a. So this is why I needed to choose sixteenth note straight in order to catch the a's. One e and a, two e and, one e and a two, right? So this is how sixteen notes look, and then you can obviously quantize this stuff to make it tighter or move things to wherever you desire, right? So that's sixteen notes straight, and similarly, you can also have sixteenth note swing. Sixteen note swing would mean you go. Something like you swing the sixteenth note instead of the eighth notes. Right? So this is sixteenth note swing. Let's see how that looks on our grid. See, it's caught those swing elements. So eighth notes will remain eighth notes in sixteen note swing because we are swinging the sixteenth notes, the E's and the E's. Okay. So sixteen note triplet is where you're gonna have six units for the grid: one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the next beat. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So you have a lot more available options if ever you do compose using that. And then last but not least, we have the dotted time field, which can be chosen here. The dotted time field basically is straight. That's important to keep in mind. It is straight, but it accesses information more in dotted notes. So that means... 1e e and a uh, 2e e and a uh, 3e e and a uh, 4e and a uh, 1e. Essentially, you divide the beat into four equal units, but then the music you play is grouped in threes, right? I hope that makes sense. I repeat, you divide your beat into four equal units, but then your accents are in threes. Let me just try and show that to you with some basic examples. Two, three, four. So this will be a dotted one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a. So by dividing or by accenting differently, you're going to approach or you're going to acknowledge a lot of the off beats which are there, as opposed to the one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So if you do one e and a two e and a three, e, you're not really playing off beat music or groovy music. But if you do one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and a. So that's the dotted field. Let me try if I can let me see if I can play you some music on the dotted field. Ta, 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 ta. So you need to get get this groove into your mind. Something like ta 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 right? Sense of three. So it 
it's a little di- tricky to count and play um, but it's good to acknowledge that when you play this information so let me try and show you on the grid so you don't necessarily need to always be in a dotted grid as such unless you're only playing on the dotted eighth note feel so if i show you this is the a uh, one e a uh, all the a's one e a uh, two e and a one e a uh, two e and a three e so it'll be one e a uh, two e and a three e this is your e a uh, two e and a three e four e a uh, and um and um and um and um and um uh, one e uh, two even though the pulse is dum 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 but it makes sense right very commonly used for your EDM and your dance music very very common for that those sort of genres right guys so let's revise all that we've learned so far so the whole intention of this lesson was to explore all the different grid settings in your DAW softwares and also understand the purpose behind it and as i say time feels this is the way you feel your time so essentially you figure out how you're dividing the beat whether you're dividing into two whether you're not dividing that's one by four or quarter notes or you're dividing into four so generally you're going to work with quarter eighth or 16 mostly eighth and 16 if you ask me very rarely you'll want to see your grid in multiplications of the beat then by default your beat will be straight i would recommend eighth note straight as much as possible you can also look at triplets if your music is da 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 it could be swing if it's ta ta da ta da ta da ta or if it's in fact straight it'll end up being da 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 or dotted in rare instances where you're playing more of the dance edm hits like ta 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 and you're always in that sort of dotted world and when we do swing please understand that you can adjust the percentage of the swing to make it more and more groovy as per your requirement by default you could set it to 50% and that's your normal swing triplet world okay so these are all the time fields in music guys if you have any questions if you'd like us to teach you something more please leave it in the comments and if you haven't already please subscribe to our youtube channel right away and also share the channel and the video with all your musician friends give us a thumbs up cheers and i will catch you in the next video